Actress Patty Duke has made no secret of her desperate battle with mental illness and even suicide attempts. But tonight, for the first time, you will hear from two people who suffer through her ordeal as well. They are her two sons. Sean Astin, who stars in the epic Lord of the Rings movies, and his younger brother, Mackenzie. Maybe it's not surprising that both are actors, but it is remarkable that they are also loyal and loving sons after what they've lived through as children. You'll hear their intimate family story now as mother and sons talk candidly with Deborah Roberts about surviving, forgiving, and moving forward together. I wonder if we'll ever be put into songs or tales. What? Millions got to know him as Samwise, the loyal Let's sidekick of Frodo home. in the Lord of the Rings blockbuster trilogy. <laughs> You've left out one of the chief characters, Samwise the Brave. Sean Astin took on the heart and soul of the story and stole the show. Come on, Mr. Frodo. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Come on! It's a great role to play because Sam is the essence of loyalty and bravery and honesty and decency and goodness. Go and shoot it! Do the work! Their characteristics common to the 33-year-old actor's most celebrated parts, like Rudy, the determined underdog who persevered against all odds. And the same stout-hearted role he often took on in his own family drama. For a long time, I felt like I was the, um, yeah, that I was the Secretary General of the United Nations of our sort of ungapachi mismatch <laughs> sort of family. Mom you know, of like that I, family I, is show business legend <laughs> Patty Duke. As a child actress, she made an indelible impression as the blind, deaf, and mute Helen Keller in the movie The Miracle Worker. At 16, she became the youngest actress up until that time to win an Oscar. What a crazy then came the Patty Duke Show. Sean's dad, John Astin, is a television icon too, best known as Gomez, the patriarch of a family of a very different sort. Younger yes. brother Mackenzie was born when Sean was two spend his adolescence learning the facts of life. As you'll see, life in this Hollywood household was hardly a sitcom, but nothing ever got in the way of this mother's pride. You're looking at Sean now, not only as a son, but as, as an accomplished actor. I mean, as a great, big movie star. <laughs> what is it like, though, seeing him as such an amazing, hot actor? When he first comes on the screen, it's the mother who's proud. You know, it's as if, oh, I did that. <laughs> um, but then I get involved in his performances, and he moves me. But the most important thing is that he is, um, at the core, the decent, generous, loving, respectful man that I hoped he would be. That may be the biggest miracle of all, since Sean and his brother Mac grew up in the shadow of their mother's undiagnosed mental illness. Patty Duke first spoke to 2020's Hugh Downs in 1989 about her manic depression and suicide attempts. I did it a lot of times. And usually came after some sort of argument that I had begun uh, with either with my husband or children and my behavior would be so angry and so vicious that I then couldn't live with that guilt, and they were better off without me. Now, 15 years later, she still talks about the frightening moments that led to that regret. When mom's behavior would start to get a little bizarre, say, in a manic phase, it was going to get loud, and it was going to get mean, and I would go to the, the part of them that I could make suffer the most. Though she's been brutally honest about her mental illness before, Patty Duke's children are now talking for the first time about how it was to be in their shoes. Yeah, there was plenty of stuff that was uh, mortifying, horrifying. And to be exposed to something that is not in control is as 
as scary as, you know, being in battle. But it was Sean, the older, more resilient child, who was most often the target of their mother's manic rages, though today he recalls the stories with humor. I was working on this model airplane, this incredible wingspan, as a glider. I remember cleaning my room up till everything was perfect, and I could hear the sound of mom sort of going through the hallways like the, like, you know, the beast in Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> And she came in with this glass of water and looked and saw, looked around the room, instantly surveyed that I cleaned it. was perfect. And she's like, oh, great, you're effing perfect, aren't you? <laughs> and throws the water in my face. And then she, she destroyed the model. Oh, God. I never know when you're telling the truth anymore. And as if home wasn't nightmarish enough, Patty and Sean played mother and son in a fictional version of an even more violent life. It was his acting debut. He was now repeating the same sort of childhood his mother had endured, one marred by mental illness. Patty's alcoholic father deserted the family when she was seven, and her mother struggled with undiagnosed depression. When Patty grew up and gave birth to Sean in 1971, she vowed not to pass on the pain. We made silent deals with each other <laughs> about what we'd do for each other. What kind of deals? Um, that I'd always tell him the truth. That um, I would do my best never to hurt him <laughs> the way I had been hurt. And look what happened. Years later, because of that illness, I did exactly what I had promised that little baby in the bassinet I would never do. Patty was finally diagnosed with manic depression at age 35, the same year she and John Aston separated. Since then, she's been successfully treated with lithium. And with her tell-all biography and television appearances in the late 80s, Patty began the long process of making amends. The toughest was, uh, was feeling that I could ever be trusted again, specifically by my children for having attempted suicide in their presence. These children went through utter hell. Today, it's hard to imagine how mother and sons have any relationship at all. But Sean and Mac were 11 and 9 when their mother was diagnosed, so they've also lived through the years of recovery and reconciliation. And both insist that the bad times made them stronger. Yeah, there were times that were hard. There were times that were, that, that were um, where there was where there was fear, but I almost felt as though at, at all the, the really scary moments that you have as a kid I almost felt this sense of calm and peace at those moments Calm that, and peace yeah. when there was turmoil going on in the yeah, house? Yeah, a little bit It was almost like she was testing me to see if I would break How does a child come out of an experience like that though so centered? I mean there are children who are just Ripped their people, adults who are ripped apart by childhood memories. Well, that's my or parents. Point. This who woman had is a powerful, illness. strong woman who wanted us to grow up independent and confident and strong. And that was 99% of the time. And, and 1 the, of the there, time, there was, was also a father who dedicated himself to diffusing situations and, and reassuring these young men. So he pulled it all together. Well, Tom. no, no, there's something in me. I, I take credit for this. I take credit for my strength and my, my maturity at that age because you know what? I was, my proclivity was to trust in, that everything was going to be all right. But when Sean was 14, another betrayal. His mother revealed that John Aston was not his biological father. He'd actually been born to a single Patty Duke amid scandal. Tabloid headlines claim the unmarried 23-year-old star was carrying the love child of her 17-year-old boyfriend, Desi Arnaz Jr., and that his mother, Lucille Ball, was aghast. It was a horror. It Gee, was. <laughs> but that was a I'm stigma sorry. at that point. To be... It was a stigma. And your fame didn't shield you from the shame uh -huh. and the embarrassment? No. Remember, I was little Patty Duke who came into the living rooms on Wednesday nights. Who was sweet and chaste. That's right. So when a stranger named Michael Tell came to sublet her apartment and offered to marry the pregnant Patty Duke, she agreed. Within three hours, we were in Las Vegas in front of a preacher. The marriage to Michael Tell lasted 13 days and ended long before Sean was born.
Battelle would resurface when Sean was 26. Someone suggested that his biological father wasn't Desi Arnaz Jr. either, but a man he'd never even heard about. So Sean set out to find his own truth, this time based on blood tests, which would offer a surprising outcome. You know, Desi Arnaz Jr. loves me, and I love him. We are so close. Science tells me, to a genetic and blood standard, that he's not my biological father. Science tells me that Mike Tell is. He's a good man. I love him. He loves me. In fact, Sean Astin calls four people dad. I can call any of them on the phone anytime I want to. <laughs> anytime I want to. All four of them. John, Desi, Mike, or Papa Mike, her husband, my four dads. The truth shall set me free. It did. It was an incredible touchstone for me. But well not for I his mother, who continues to believe that Desi Arnaz Jr. is Sean's biological father, in spite of the blood tests. So mother and son have agreed to disagree. And somehow their complex family seems closer than ever. I think how we have survived it is that we are people who believe in forgiveness and moving on. Do you forgive her, Sean? I, well, I didn't think there was anything that much to forgive, except, I mean, not to me. The, the, the old stuff, yeah, forgiven. Forgiven? Forgiven? I'll take it either Forgived. way. Forgiven. <laughs> Forgone. Have you forgiven yourself? Yes. Yeah. Um, took a long time. Took a very long time. Yeah. I am able to see, hear, and smell so much more than when I carried around that, I hate you, you're mean, you're this, you're that. And Patty Duke's boys have grown into strong, loving men any mother would wish for. Mac, who's now engaged, is an actor. And Sean, father of two daughters, has been married to Christine for 12 years. His own Hollywood memoir will hit bookstores in the fall. You inherited your mother's talent, acting talent, obviously. Thank you. Are you at all worried that your greatest inheritance from your mom could be mental illness? Um, my wife and I talk about that a lot. I mean, I, th I, um, I think we have a level of awareness. So I at least have the benefit of um, a lot of thinking about it. But um, I'm surrounded by people who love me, and, and I, I have a, a certain amount of self-awareness. So if, uh, if I start getting a little loopy, you know, people, they'll ring me in. <laughs> Patty Duke and her sons may be the ultimate showbiz family, but in the end, not so different from many others, with fights and forgiveness, illness and health, and ultimately enough love to survive it all. What do you love most about your mother? <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I love. I know exactly what I love. Put this down. Okay. What I love the most about my mother is that she's a survivor. She wants to live. She's here, you know, because she wants to.